deputy search of the Gage County Sheriff's Department taking a videotaped voluntary statement from Ada, ADA, Joanne, J-O-A-N-N, -N, last name Taylor. Joanne, again, the reason why we are visiting with you is in reference to the Helen Wilson case. At the time I was arrested, I was living back home with my mom and family on a dairy farm. I had a 14-month-old baby, and the night I was arrested, the cops just came from everywhere. When I was placed in the cop car after my prior, as I was arrested, they kept telling me that they had proof that I had been involved in a homicide in Beatrice, Nebraska, that there had already been somebody to tell them that I had been involved. And I kept telling them I didn't have a clue what the hell they were talking about. Sometime during the late evening hours. Of they February, kept telling me they knew I was involved with the murder. The they they could prove it. I might as well come sick. clean and tell them because the sooner I told them something, the sooner I'd go home. All I was worried about is having my little boy at home. I had a 14-month-old baby. I was a newlywed. I'd gotten married while I was in county. So I was like, you know, really wanting to go home. But it, I didn't know what they were talking about. I had no clue. When I realized what was going on and was wondering why me, oh yeah, they, um, I thought it was just because I was one of the town drunks. I would get drunk and I would fight. So it was, I wasn't from the area, so it was easy to just use me as an escape goat. Joanne, how can you remember some things and then not the other things? That's the way my mind is, it's fucked up. Literally, it just, my psychologist will tell you, it's, it comes and goes when it wants to. And you realize you're talking about a real serious offense here, right? Okay. You also realize that, you know, you have claimed to have been there when this took place. Because I was told I was there. Who told you that? The cops that picked me up last night told me they had proof I was there. There is a deputy that was my psychologist in a prior case. So he, I have mental health issues, so he knew how to push my buttons to get me to my stressful point where I would believe anything that was being fed to me. Your benefit if you listen to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you hear your benefit? Joanne, let me, let me. Any information that was being told, I would accept it as knowledge and fact. Don't get too off. Let me tell you something. It's going to be to your benefit if you listen to me, okay? When they first started interrogating me, they kept telling me they'd make me the first female on death row. I did not know Nebraska didn't have a female death row. They just kept pushing it on a very regular, almost daily basis that I might as well come clean that they were going to put me on death row and I might as well face it. Between everything this law enforcement was saying, I firmly believed I was there. I could see myself in the apartment. I could see myself involved. And it became very, very real to me. It was, I was steadily told that, that, I, that they could prove I did it. And it was to the point that it was just easier for me to do what they needed me to do instead of fighting them. Did threatening me with the death penalty impact my, oh yeah. But I had come to believe that I was testifying to something I had actually done. I did not know that it was not something I'd actually done at that point. When I pled, they had offered the plea agreement four different times. My agreement was supposed to be for no more than 15 years, which would have gotten me out in seven. So. In my mind, I figured I'd still have some time with my child and still be able to have a marriage that was worth having. And in reality, the, which I did not understand that the judge didn't have to stick to that, I ended up with a sentence of 10 to 40 years. My husband divorced me while I was in prison. I saw my youngest son that was 14 months old when I was arrested for the first time face to face earlier this year in October. Uh, my family and I are not tight. I have lost quite a few family members while I was locked up. So it's hard to have a family that's not there anymore. 
Well, why do people plead guilty when they know they're innocent? A lot of times, it, it could be like my situation where there's a mental health issue and you start to believe what you're being told. It could be, well, if you, tell, if you confess to this, you'll go home sooner. We want to make sure we get everybody that's involved in this. When you plead guilty, it takes the death penalty off the table, which they were trying to remind me that I could be faced as the first female on death row, which really made me decide, okay, I got, I don't, I'm not ready to die. I was 26 years old. I was not ready to die. I was ready to give up. But I pleaded guilty because it also saved my life. 